Welcome to the Radio Amateur Channel. Are you new to ham radio or have you been a ham for a while and you've thought about trying VHF or UHF operating or possibly trying VHF or UHF contesting? Uh, you can do it with modest equipment. Uh, however, you will need an all mode transceiver uh, for either 2 meters or 70 centimeters or both. And uh, for example, I started out in the 1980s with an ICOM IC211 2 meter all mode transceiver and it put out about 10 watts. And then on 432, I had a microwave modules transverter and it put out about 10 watts. And I bought the ICOM IC211 from Dave KWW in the Cleveland area. And I believe I bought it in about 1983, sometime in the summer, I believe. And KWW at the time had a booming signal on 432. And he had a, a really top-notch 432 moon bounce uh, station at the time. And the first time that I, I had operated on 432 was a little bit prior to the August uh, UHF contest in 1982. And I also operated uh, in the UHF contest. Uh, but I didn't work a whole lot of stations, but I did uh, work some. And I had the microwave modules transverter with 10 watts and a beam at about 60 feet. And then later in 1983, in the June uh, VHF contest, I worked a number of stations on 432. And I think the furthest was uh, uh, possibly Western New York, uh, as well as others. And in 1984, then, I operated in the June VHF contest with uh, 10 watts on 2 meters and 10 watts on 432. And I worked a number of states on 2 meters and a number of states on 432. And I think my furthest distance on 432 was uh, the Chicago area working W9ZIH and some other stations. And shortly after the contest, I worked... Uh, Wisconsin, Missouri, and some other stations in New York on two meters. And during the uh, September VHF contest, I worked Tennessee, New York, Ontario, and a number of other stations uh, in other states, uh, including a number of stations near Chicago. And I also worked W1TKZ in FN33, as well as others. And then a few days uh, later, I worked uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, and then I worked K uh, two TXB in New Jersey on two meters. And then on 432, I worked into FN or FM 29 and FM 20. And then I heard K1FO, I called them, but I didn't work them. Uh, so what were the antennas that I uh, was using at the time on two meters and 432? Well, back in 1977, the eight element Quaggy was introduced uh, in a QST article by Wayne Overbeck, uh, K6YNB or N6NB as it was known later. And it was an easy to build, uh, high gain and uh, inexpensive antenna. And these uh, had versions for two meters, 220 and 432, as well as 1296. And then in 1978, uh, Wayne had another QSD article uh, with a 15 element long boom 432 uh, Quaggy design. Uh, so how good is the Quaggy antenna? Well, the eight element Quaggy antenna won a lot of VHF conference antenna gain contests uh, with gains measuring from 12 to 13 dBD. And the 15 element Quaggy came in at about 14 to 15 dBD. So if you want to try two meters or 432 uh, terrestrial operation or VHF or UHF contesting, but you don't have a lot of money uh, for expensive commercial antennas, then maybe the Quaggy antenna is for you. So let's take a look at the Quaggy antenna. On your screen, I have the eight element uh, Quaggy antenna materials list and dimensions for the two meter version. For the boom, you'll need something that's about 14 feet long. It'll end up being about one by three inches made of either pine or Douglas fir, they suggest. 
and you'll taper that to about one inch at each end. And you'll need some plexiglass or thin wooden spreaders for the quad loops for the reflector and the driven element. And they'll be made out of 12 uh, gauge solid wire. For the uh, driven element, you'll need either an SO239 chassis or N uh, type chassis type connector. And then for the six uh, directors, you'll need 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter aluminum or other type of rod. Some people use like brazing rod or uh, some kind of uh, like stainless steel. Um, welding rod that you can get at like a welding supply uh, shop you can use then uh, to uh, attach it to your uh, uh, mast you'll need a, a tv type u-bolt clamp mount and you can get those at like lowe's or home depot or menard someplace like that or you can just use a regular uh, u-bolt clamp dimensions uh, the reflector is 86 and 5 8 inches and you will need to um, close that and uh, uh, solder that uh, to a closed loop. And then your driven element is 82 inches. And that's where you'll use either the SO239 or the N chassis type connector. And then you'll have directors that range from 35 and 5 16 inches to 35 inches. And you'll uh, shorten those as you go along by three sixteenths of an inch each. Now for the element spacing on the boom, from the reflector to the driven element, you have 21 inches of spacing. From the driven element to uh, the director one, you have 15 and three quarter inches. And then director one to director two, the spacing is 33 inches. Director 2 to Director 3 is 17 and a half inches. And then Director 3 to Director 4 is 26.1 inches. And then the same for D4 to D5 and D5 to D6. Now, if you look on the internet, you may be able to find the original articles in PDF form. So uh, you might want to look there and it has a little bit more information. Or you might be able to find an old... Uh, ARRL uh, antenna manual or uh, handbook that has this in. On screen now I have the materials list and dimensions for the 8 element Quaggy antenna for 432 MHz. And for this you'll need a boom that is 4 foot 10 inches long made out of wood or fiberglass if you can find something like that. But it specifies that it needs to be about uh, at half an inch uh, thick at the most. And uh, you'll need some plexiglass or thin wooden spreaders for the quad loops for the reflector and the driven element. And these will be made out, again out of uh, solid 12 uh, gauge wire. And uh, you'll need an end panel chassis type connector for the driven element. And then you'll need 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter aluminum or other type of uh, rod that I explained earlier, the possibilities for the uh, uh, 2 meter uh, rods. And then you'll need another uh, TV type U-bolt clamp mount. And then if you look at the dimensions, the reflector is 28 inches long for the reflector and you'll close that loop. Then the driven element is 26 and 5 eighths inch uh, long, and you'll connect that to the end chassis type connector. And then you'll need uh, directors, uh, six directors ranging from 11 and 3 quarter inch to 11 and 7 16 inch, and you'll uh, decrease those by 1 uh, 16th inch steps. Now for the spacing, the reflector to the driven element is 7 inches. The driven element to director 1 is 5 and a quarter inches. Director 1 to director 2 is 11 inches. Director 2 to director 3 is 5.85 inches. Director 3 to director 4 is 8.73 inches. Director 4 to director 5 is 8.73 inches. And director 5 to director 6 is 8.73 inches. On your screen, I have 
uh, the materials and dimensions for the 15 element long boom uh, Quaggy antenna for 432 megahertz. And for the boom, you'll need a 1 by 2 inch by 12 foot long piece of Douglas fir or pine, and you'll taper that to 5 eighths of an inch at both ends. And you can use uh, fiberglass for the boom if you can find something uh, like that. But it can't be uh, more than about a half inch uh, thickness for the boom material. Then you'll need plexiglass or thin wooden spreaders for the quad loops for the reflector and the driven element. And then you'll need uh, solid uh, 12 gauge wire that you'll uh, make the loops from. And you'll need one end uh, chassis type connector. And then for your uh, directors, you'll need 1 8 inch or 3 millimeter aluminum or other uh, type of metal uh, rod, as I explained earlier. And then you'll need a TV type U-bolt clamp mount. And if you look at the dimensions, the reflector is 28 inches long and it'll be a closed loop. Your driven element is 26 and 5 eighths inches. And that you will connect your N uh, chassis connect, uh, type connector to. Then uh, D1 is 11 and 3 quarter inches. D2 is 11 and 11 sixteenths inches. D3 is 11 and 5 eighths inches. D4 is 11 and 9 sixteenths inches. D5 is 11 and a half inches. D6 is 11 and 7 sixteenths inches. D7 is 11 and 3 eighths inches. D8 is 11 and 5 eighths inches. D9 is 11 and 5 sixteenths inches. D10 is 11 and a quarter inch. D11 is 11 and 3 sixteenths inch. D12 is 11 and 1 eighth inch. And D13 is 11 and 1 sixteenth inch. Now for the spacings, uh, the reflector to the driven element is 7 inches. The driven element to uh, director 1 is 5 and a quarter inches. D1 to D2 is 11 inches. D2 to D3 is 5 and 7 eighths inches. D3 to D4 is 8 and 3 quarter inches. D4 to D5 is 8 and 3 quarter inches. D5 to D6 is 8 and 3 quarter inches. D6 to D7 is 12 inches. D7 to D8 is 12 inches. D8 to D9 is 11 and a quarter inch. D9 to D10 is 11 and a half inches. D10 to D11 is 9 and 3 sixteenths inch. D11 to D12 is 12 and 3 eighths inch. And D12 to D13 is 13 and 3 quarter inch uh, spacing. I hope this video has been uh, of some help to you, especially if you are uh, wanting to try out uh, VHF or UHF terrestrial type communications or contesting. And one thing I forgot to mention was that you will have to treat your uh, wood boom for waterproofing um, either by uh, using uh, some kind of uh, wood treatment or uh, like a uh, uh, marine type varnish or uh, just paint them. Now these won't last forever. They will weather and at some point uh, uh, you will have to either replace them or uh, if you like it, then maybe move on to a uh, better antenna that you can build out of aluminum or possibly, uh, if you have the money, purchase them. Uh, but anyway, I hope this is uh, helpful if you're interested in getting started in an in inexpensive way. And these are good antennas. So anyway, thank you for coming to the Radio Amateur channel. And I hope you have a great day. And uh, like and subscribe. And 73.